here. So I've never actually done a video like this before, so I'm doing a monthly favorites video. Since it's not exactly monthly, I'm probably gonna do these more like quarterly, so like once every season. So I'll call this one here in Melbourne, it's winter, so I'll call this my winter faves. Um, but yeah, because I've never done this before, I feel like I'm gonna have a super long list. My faves can go on forever, because y'all know I'm a bit of a product hoarder. Something new comes out, I need to try it, I need to buy it. That's me. I have no self-control. <laughs> I'm a shopaholic for sure, oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm gonna share with you some products I've tried out and ones that I've really been loving at the moment, ones that have worked for me, and I'll tell you a little bit about them. And if you like them, you can try them out yourself, or if you just like watching these videos, um, because sometimes I do that as well, even if it's, some, if it's something that I haven't really got a wish list. I just, um, I don't watch much TV, but I just like to go on YouTube and always have it like even going in the background while I'm um, doing my makeup and stuff. I just love YouTube. I'm a bit of a YouTube addict. But yeah, um, tell me what you think. This is my first time doing this style of video and I hope that you enjoy. So the first two products that I've got here, they're actually from a hair care brand called Virtue. So everything in their line is 100% vegan and they do shampoos, conditioners, salon grade styling products. Um, everything in their range contains an ingredient called 60KU human hair keratin. So keratin is a protein which um, helps rebond and strengthen the hair. So if you've used treatments like Olaplex before, um, those contain a protein as well, which is particularly helpful for like your bleached, color treated, dry, um, damaged hair. So it's going to help um, strengthen and repair the hair. So, um, so what makes Virtue different? They are the first brand in the world and this is patented with them as well. So they're actually the only brand who can use this 60KU keratin. So it actually comes from human hair extension. So if you think of other brands who use all these keratin treatment, it actually comes from an animal protein. So for example, if you think of hair, our hair is human hair, right? We're not a monkey, we're not a dog, we're not rabbit, any other animal, cow. <laughs> so. Our genetic makeup is most going to recognize the DNA from a chemical which we already produce naturally. So what at Virtue do they actually use human hair which comes from hair extensions? So that means this entire line is safe to use on wigs and hair extensions as well, which is amazing. I mean, if you don't know, I have extensions and wigs as well. I always change them up. But some products contain like sulfates and nasties and proteins and things which can actually build up on the hair and cause it to be more likely to snap but with the human hair keratin that's not going to do that so that's why it's completely safe to use on your hair extensions and wigs and things as well but yeah they actually are working towards sustainability at virtue so they actually use they but so they believe that nothing should go to waste and they actually use sorry i'm gonna sit these down you know me i talk with my hands a lot but so when you have like a hair extension even like a clip in here i'll show you okay so here i will just wanted to show you what i mean but she's been through a lot don't judge me by uh how down in the dumps my hair extensions are looking so what they do when they make a hair extension um, so you can imagine this part grows from your head. So they actually have to cut off about an inch of hair, which has like the cuticle, you know, that little ball if you pull out a hair and then there's like a DNA attached to it. So they um, remove all of that. So the cuticles are aligned and you can see how it is perfectly straight. So they've um, sewn it into the weft. That's why, um, so sometimes people will ask, hey, if I cut off my hair, can I turn it into a wig? No, because that hair that you cut off your head, the hair isn't going to be lined up like that, for one. And for two, it's probably not going to be that great of quality. But yeah, so 
that bit of hair, um, Virtue actually gets from the hair extension company and they cook it in a big pot, they cook all the keratin out of it, and that is what goes into their products. And they do that with the top of the hair, but normally also the hair extension companies, they'll cut a little bit off the end, because as you can see, naturally our hair isn't as full as the top as it is on the end, so even me, like if I was making my own hair extension brand, I would probably cut these off. So anyone who wears hair extensions, you would know that after you wear them for six months a year they start to really thin out at the bottom and sometimes you do need to cut them like these could probably really do with a nice uh, haircut to be completely honest with you but yeah I just wanted to show you guys that I thought it would help explain but yeah I hope that makes sense um so Virtue they have three types of shampoos and conditioners so the purple one that I have here this is so for very like thin oily hair. Their restore range is more rich and repairing. So that's going to be for like your drier processed hair. And then they do the purifying shampoo and conditioner as well. So what the purifying range will do is take any buildup of product um, off of the hair and make it really nice and smooth. So I actually had the opportunity to fly to Sydney and I met the creative directors and founder of the brand. So that was an awesome experience. They actually gave us some samples to try from the Restore range. So it's come in the minty sort of teal bottle. But because I have really fine hair, I found I could get away with using it on the ends, but if I lathered too much on, especially with the conditioner, it just made my hair feel really limp and I had to wash it nearly every second day. It would just get super oily super fast, but it, I feel like it would be perfect for anyone who has like really like bleach processed hair or maybe you've even just got like ombre on the ends of your hair and you just want to run that through there as well. They are full of antioxidants, but they also have AHAs and BHAs in them as well, which I found really interesting. So if you think of that we're putting AHAs and BHAs, for those of you who don't know, just abbreviation for alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid, so like your glycolic acid, salicylic acid, blah, 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 all that stuff. If you want a skincare video, let me know and I can do a separate one because I get really frustrated when people are asking me repetitively all these skincare questions because I feel like I sound like a broken record sometimes and I really don't like, it's not really something I enjoy. It's like knowledge that is stored in my brain but I don't really <laughs> enjoy um, talking about it as much but I find it interesting because I find all science and aspects of science interesting but I digress. So if you think of you're putting AHAs or BHAs on your face, what it does, it exfoliates the skin, so it's going to get rid of any dead skin cells, make the face overall like smoother and makeup apply better and the skin just feel cleaner. So if you think about, it's something I had never even considered before, putting those sort of products, those sort of exfoliating ingredients in the hair, but if you think about it, if we're using hairspray, um, gel, mousse, all these different hair products, dry shampoo especially, the worst one, it's going to build up on our hair. And even if we shampoo, condition our hair just once, it's not going to remove the build up completely. That's why um, a lot of companies will say on the back of their shampoo bottles, please shampoo um, twice and rinse. So when you are using these exfoliating ingredients, if you think one, it's exfoliating the scalp, so then new hair can grow easily because there's not all that crud caked on there, like dry shampoo buildup and stuff, keeping the hair from coming out and sort of like pushing the hair back into the head because you want the hair to come out, you want it to grow so your hair will be longer. Yeah, um, so I just thought that was really interesting that they use AHAs and BHAs to exfoliate the hair, so also take the buildup of product off the strand of hair itself, but also exfoliating the scalp. I was like, what in the world? Normally, when you think of like 
hair scrubs and things like that, you think of like those coarse, grainy, like salt texture ones, which really physically you can feel it like scrubbing the scalp. But like it's 2020, man, people are using chemical exfoliators on their face and now in their hair too, apparently, and it works. I love it. And also one thing to add, I swear I'm not sponsored by Virtue. I just really love and believe in their product 1000%. Like especially after I tested the mini size of their restorative range. A bit rich, a bit thick, heavy for my hair type because I'm really fine and don't have a lot of volume. It weighed my hair down but would be perfect for anyone who is like super processed, dry, or needs that extra sort of conditioning but I absolutely love their full range. So it's perfect for anyone who wants a bit more volume or if you have alopecia, my ferret has alopecia. <laughs> I don't use on him because he's not that bougie, but I guess I could, I guess I should. <laughs> um, anyone who is like balding, I have quite thin um, hair. There's a part on this side of my head, so I've, where I part my hair over, I have a bit of like a bald spot there from a chemical burn that I've had nearly 10 years ago from bleaching my hair and the hair has never really grown back all the way but honestly this helps really thicken the hair and I love it so much oh my gosh and best part it smells like watermelon and I'm telling you it's not like that fake synthetic candy watermelon like no you cut open a watermelon that you get from the supermarket like fresh summer day like just pleasant vibes it smells like that like it actually smells like real melon not that fake like chemically smell oh my god it's so good <laughs> but if it's something that you guys have tried you'll have to let me know what you think of virtue I'd really like to know on my wish list I actually really want to try their mousse so if anyone of you guys know me I cannot wash my hair get out of the shower and blow dry it without using mousse so I have to have mousse in my hair at the moment for the past maybe three years I've been using the De Lorenzo mousse um, I tried one from a beta horrible don't recommend it did nothing for me but the reason I want to try this virtue one it actually is a heat protectant two-in-one and I don't think it's going to be a replacement for my De Lorenzo Extinguish. Like, let me tell you, this product is my holy grail. I spray it on all of my clients' hair, as well as any time I'm curling or straightening my human hair wigs and extensions. But I just feel like, especially on my wigs and extensions, because they're not attached to a human head, they don't produce as much oil. So they are a bit more like susceptible to breakage and stuff just because the hair doesn't grow. Um, but having the mousse in there to protect them and then adding this on top, I feel like that's just going to give them that extra bit of protection and volume and va va -voo. Plus I use mousse on my hair every time I wash it as well and blow dry. It just gives me that extra bit of volume. But yeah, not. I'm not sure it can replace my extinguish but I feel like they're gonna work really well together. So another product that I've really been super loving at the moment, so this is actually Dr. Bronner's Organic Lavender Scented Hand Sanitizer Spray. So let me tell you, I have been using this for nearly, I would say maybe three or four years since I've been doing my freelance makeup artist and even when I was in makeup school, I've always had this in my kit. I just find something about a spray, it dries a lot quicker and doesn't feel as like sticky and gloopy, for example, as a gel or liquid hand sanitizer does. It definitely, because honestly, every time I use a liquid hand sanitizer, I feel like I'm standing there waving my hands in the air for a minute, like I'm doing some groovy new <laughs> dance moves or something, and people are looking at me like, the she on. <laughs> I'm just like, guys, I, I, I'm not, I'm not on any kind of drugs. I'm just like trying to fan myself. Okay. <laughs> Cleanliness is, uh, you know, the way to be, especially in this time of crisis. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> but yeah, 
yeah, Dr. Bronner, they're a great company. They're cruelty free. They don't test on animals. I use their Cure Hemp Castile Soap to actually wash and clean all of my makeup brushes and also to clean my ferret. <laughs> but honestly, this stuff, every client I have, they're like, whoa, what perfume are you using? It smells so good and lavender as well is really calming and aroma like it sort of has that aromatherapy aspect to it so if anyone is like a bit like fidgety when or have really sensitive eyes when you're trying to get an eyelash or eyeliner on them this is perfect to have because it's going to help like calm and relax them feel like really like the zen vibes but yeah i love it now that we've been in this COVID pandemic, I have a bottle in my handbag, a bottle in my bathroom, a bottle, a bottle in my kitchen, a bottle next to my computer desk. It's just sort of like living in all corners of my house. <laughs> and yeah, this stuff is not expensive at all. I think it's like um, maybe six or seven Australian dollars, I think. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll insert a price here or somewhere in the video. Okay guys, so one thing, if you know me, you know that I love me some chai tea, oh my god. So <laughs> every morning I wake up, I start my day off with um, a cup of chai, so I'll use two tea bags in a mug, and then what I do, so I let that steep for like maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds a minute, probably not that long because I'm impatient as heck, and then I'll pour that tea into one of my reusable cups. This one I've really been loving at the moment. Um, my mom gave it to me. I think she said she bought it from the Girl Scouts when they were having a fundraiser. So yeah, I've been using this one to death, honestly. I've got a big crack in it and water water gets inside. So like the, the uh, decal is starting to fade off. It's galaxy print though. Not sure if it's too bright or if you can see. Yeah, but I really like this one. Um, so what I do, I'll pour my tea in here from like a little mug, like just your standard like tea mug. And then I'll fill that mug um, probably about like three quarters of the way full. So there's still a little gap. It's not like overflowing or anything. I'll fill that with my light soy milk. So I really like to use a Vita soy one. I feel like it has the nicest, smoothest sort of taste. It doesn't feel like overpowering like like an overpowering like punch of soy like, in your face and also it has a lower fat content than like your regular soy milk because I'm literally drinking them every day sometimes I'll have one in the morning and I'll have one at night as well but yeah I put that milk in the microwave for a minute and 10 seconds that's my sweet spot that I've found <laughs> and while I'm waiting for that to microwave I stir in two teaspoons of sugar so my hot tea is in here and I put the two teaspoons of sugar inside until it melts and then I will um, top that up with my soy milk as soon as I take it out of the microwave and that just makes me a happy person. If I don't have my chai, I am a little bit like upset. Chocolate milk is good too, strawberry milk is good too, but man, I really like chai. <laughs> I can't live without it, seriously. And Narada Organics, so this is pure organic chai tea and I just found that it tastes the best. I've pretty much tried every single one that they sell at the supermarket. Some of like the loose tea leaves at like specialty stores like T2 and all the health food shops and stuff. But this one to me is most accessible, most affordable, easy to find, and tastes the best. So this next product might be a little bit of like, how do I say? TMI, but like, what? We're all family here. We know. We're, we're human beings. Everybody sweats, okay? So, this is Kapari Natural Deodorant. So, it is aluminum free, safe for sensitive skin, free from SLS, all those nasty ingredients. Because um, if you think about it, when we apply even something as simple as a deodorant, we're using it every single day, but when we put it onto our skin, because our skin is the biggest organ um, on our entire body. We have skin all over our body, so it absorbs what is on top of it. That's why I like using vegan makeup and more pro and products that have more natural ingredients where I can. 
Okay, seriously guys, try it out. <laughs> so, this product, I'm just gonna test it on my arm for you here. But as you can see, it goes on clear. It doesn't leave any color at all. So it's great. So you're not gonna get that sort of like white streak on your clothes. You know, we all got that black shirt and then we put it on, we're in a rush to work. It's my dress code at work. I have to wear all black as well. So I'm in the same boat with you. I feel you there, oh my God. <laughs> so put on my black shirt rushing out the door, don't even realize. I look in the mirror at work, I'm like, oh my God, I've got like a white, like <laughs> lines all across me. I'm like, oh my God. And you know it's from where you pulled on your shirt and your pits weren't dry all the way and you get these marks and oh my God, I hate that. But with this, it's completely clear. The one that I have, this is a gardenia scent. If anyone knows the smell Gucci Bloom or even Absolutely Blooming from Dior, it's that really fresh sort of floral smells reminds me of both of those fragrances it's absolutely beautiful oh my god and the scent actually is pretty full-on like i find that it lasts me um quite a long time i don't reapply through the day or anything but i feel like i can smell this fragrance on myself at least until lunchtime into work so the first like maybe four or five hours or so that i've got it on um and I reckon if I would just remember to reapply it, which, you know, I'm lazy, I don't. I don't need to. I never reapply my deodorant. I put it on in the morning after I have my shower and one, I'm a bit of like one and done. That's it. So, yeah. What a lot of people say, what I want to tell you, though, if you haven't used a natural deodorant before, if you're using like Dove or any, excuse me, any mainstream brand, which has these antiperspirants in it. Antiperspirants actually stop you from sweating. So this is not going to stop the sweat. This is going to stop the smell from the sweat. So this is a deodorant, as in it's a deodorizer, but it's not an antiperspirant. So it's not going to clog those pores and hair follicles, which can sometimes cause like when you're shaving your armpits, you get those ingrown hairs and stuff like that. That's why. Um, this is gonna save your life but let me tell you if you're first switching from your mainstream sort of drugstore deodorants that are antiperspirants like dove and speed stick what's the other one uh teen spirit all that stuff you're gonna have hell okay for like the next three to six months it is gonna stink. You're gonna need to reapply your deodorant maybe I'd say two, three times a day. You're gonna sweat a lot. It's kind of like your skin is purging, detoxifying all those toxins that it's been sucking in for like years and years and years, however long that you've been using these antiperspirants for. Because that sweat isn't able to come out. It's sort of tricking the um, glands, what is it, the sweat glands in the arm pits to keep everything in. So once you stop using those antiperspirants, your body resumes its natural sort of state as it does, like what it, what science and like biology is telling it to do, it produces sweat again. And because that sweat has been sort of like um, fermenting like some nasty sauerkraut or like whiskey or something in your like little pit holes for a like good few years or however long you've been holding it in there for oh my god <laughs> this is gross um if you don't want to talk about this you can skip ahead feel free i'll get you i understand but does that make sense like if it's been in there all in years and then when you're finally like ariana grande i want to break free you know having that moment <laughs> just letting it all out yeah, it smells real bad for the first few months. Um, some people are deterred by that and they're like, what the absolute heck? Natural deodorant doesn't work. I smell like a beast and it's not that. It's just that you have to get over that hump. It gets better, I promise. Just ride the wave, get over that hump. It gets better, I swear to you. I've been using natural deodorants for, gosh, maybe nine, almost 10 years. And back in the day, I was hardcore like, 
earth core hippie vegan I didn't even buy mainstream deodorants I actually make mine I used freaking bicarb soda and coconut oil for two years and I didn't use toothpaste that's what I brush my teeth with that's what I put my armpits oh my god but now that I've got a full-time job and stuff like I don't have time to do all that I love um, like recyclable packaging the ideas of it I would keep everything in a little glass jar that minimalism yeah but uh yeah, I don't do that anymore. I don't have the time. Time is money. But maybe one day when I am more time free, I would like more oh, juggling. I would like to learn how to juggle deodorant. Yeah, join the circus. I have no freaking clue. You have to have more than one item to juggle. <laughs> I think it's a total of three. Heck if I know. But yeah, this is starting to melt because it's coconut oil and I've had it in my hand for, uh, let's say, I have no idea. Plus, I put it all over my arm, so I'm going to sit this down now. I cannot contest to you if I had it, for example, in my handbag in like 100 degree heat. That has never happened to me. It's only ever been in my house. So, because it's melting in my warm hands, it may melt. But even most makeup and cosmetics, if, lipsticks and things, if you leave them in a hot car, they are going to melt. So, I would probably say the same thing goes for Capari. So, that might be something to consider. But yeah, the Gardenia, the bomb.com, it smells so good. If you like flowers, if you like floral stuff, they do an unscented one if you don't like a fragrance, but absolutely love it. And with drinking my tea every day, I became a bit of a collector of reusable coffee mugs and cups. So the one that I showed you, but this one here, this is from Starbucks. So you've got like your uh, like cherry blossom designs on there. It's like pink at the top and it fades down to like an ombre white. It's like a metal sort of like thermos. This one is great for like hot drinks because the top sort of just like flips up. But I always get their limited edition cherry blossom designs every single year. That one was from last year but this one here is this year. So this one is more for like your cold drinks, ice latte and stuff. Yeah, I just love the cherry blossom designs. They're super pretty. And one thing I want to say, where you can, please use reusable straws. Obviously, titanium, steel, metal straws are better than plastic because only, I believe it's less than 10% of plastic in the world actually gets recycled. But at the same time, even if you have a cup, it's come with a plastic straw like the one that I showed you. That is still better than using your single-use disposable plastic straws. But yeah, just make sure that you recycle. So a brand that I've recently learned about, Makeup Revolution. Like, where have I been living? Under a rock? What? I have no idea. So iHeart Revolution, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's the same company, but two sort of like styles. So I Heart Revolution is like your cutesy, girly, they do all these eyeshadow and blush highlighter, contour, bronzer palettes that are like melting chocolate bars and they have heaps of different colors, literally every color in the rainbow. I'll insert some pictures of a few of the different palettes that they do. Most of them are vegan on their website. If you have a look, um, you can go to I, um, makeuprevolution.com. And like I was saying, I Heart Revolution, their style is more like cutesy, teen, I guess, um, kawaii, which I like that stuff. Their Makeup Revolution is more like their like bigger, older sister, more like classical, everyday, more grown up if you don't want to carry like a colorful candy case in your bag. But you know what? I like my colorful candy uh, case. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> but these are so affordable, oh my gosh. We've just recently got them at Priceline Australia, but you can order them online as well. I believe they come from the UK. I think Ulta in America sells them too. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure. We don't have Ulta here, unfortunately, but that's what I've seen online. Um, this was 12 Australian dollars, and like some of their eyeshadow palettes, are between like 20 and 30 dollars as well they're such a good deal seriously and 
on their website if you go in there all their products that are vegan will be labeled with like a green V so they make it really easy for you which I think is great I wish more brands would do that recently I think I've tried um, Inkla they do that as well I think sugar pill if you go on the Sephora website or Mecca website either one of those two if you search for vegan products it will sort of like pick them out for you like but you have to type it into the physical search bar I like it when brands already simplify it for you and you can see straight away on the product like when you're browsing it will have like a little vegan sticker on there I feel like that's the absolute best just really simplify it and makes it as easy as can be but yeah honestly makeup revolution great products I use that blush nearly every day and the highlighter is amazing I'm telling you but yeah it has the same exact impact as some of my Becca highlighters which are like freaking nearly $60 oh my god and like a fraction of the price what if you're just starting out with makeup or if you're like um, a mom someone on a budget like a college student um, or even like if you have like daughter son who are just getting into makeup these are absolutely perfect for them to just start experimenting with as well because I feel like I don't know everybody is different but like I feel like just starting out I probably wouldn't buy my kids like a $75 eyeshadow palette and be like go ham with it when they finger paint and then I would be like internally screaming when they like demolish the whole entire thing I'd be like ah that's not how you do that pulling my hair out <laughs> but at the same time I feel like these products are affordable enough um to practice with and get the hang of it before they start getting a sort of hold on like bougier like fancier sort of makeup too and they're like vegan good ingredients safe for anyone great for sensitive skin um only thing i would say they definitely do have a bit of that like mica like cheaper like makeup smell to them some of them though are scented so some are fragrance like i think their blushes and things like their strawberry ones and like chocolate vanilla stuff like that but yeah next i'm gonna get in a little bit of to a little bit of the love that I have for Tarte. So Tarte, they are a cruelty free company. All of their skincare is 100% vegan, but not all of their makeup. So some of their makeup contains beeswax, carmine, which are animal products. So always check the ingredients list, but Tarte is pretty good. On their website, again, they do have the little labels, which will say vegan on all of their vegan products. and usually even on the actual packaging in the store if you pick one up it will should say vegan on it as well so the first new product that I've tried from Tarte this is their surfer curl mascara so this one it comes in a mini size as well I believe I think this one's is like $35 or something the mini I think what's it's like oh my god my mental math is bad I think it's like 15 bucks maybe but this one here I had no idea. It's absolutely changed my life in a way that I didn't even know it would. My friends who are makeup artists, people are telling me all the time, they're like, oh, I use a different mascara for my top lashes, and then I use a different one for my bottom lashes. I'm like, why? It's just mascara. It's black. What are you on about? And until I used this, I had no idea. So I've been using this for my lower lashes. The brush is so Thin, and as you saw before the way that it tapers to the end here it gets really small it starts a bit bigger so I apply it this way and then again I'll flip it over I use the smaller side closest to my nose so my lashes are longer on the outside corners so they can have the longer brush bristles so they're shorter on the inside corners so you want to use the shorter brush bristles it's amazing revolutionary literally you can use it on top lashes as well I find though I like really voluminous effect this is more of like your curling mascara so it will give you like a bit of a lift but I like something a little bit thicker a little bit juicier with my top lashes especially when I'm brushing it on these big fake lashes yes I put mascara on my fake lashes I know not everyone does but I do um, I feel like this brush takes me a long time because these lashes are real long so I feel like I literally have to keep brushing up, brushing up. But it is so small 
and perfect for really getting those little baby hairs like even on the inner corner. I love this stuff. And it's not waterproof, so it's still really easy to remove. You're not gonna have to like scrub and scrub and rip out your natural lashes just trying to get it off. But at the same time, it is smudge proof and it doesn't flake off or anything throughout the day. And honestly, I've got really oily eyelids. Some mascara formulas, I will get like little black rings under my eyes because my eyelids are literally so freaking greasy. I have no idea why. I use toner. I use all the good skincare and stuff to like remove the oil before I do my makeup, but never fails. At the end of the day, I always have like my mascara ends up down here and they're like little dots. I'll do like one, two, three, four, five. They're like little black dots under my eyes. Not a look. I mean, I guess that's the price that you pay for having beautiful, long, luscious bottom lashes. What if? I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, this doesn't do that. I find I've actually been a bit in a committed relationship with Tarte because all of their mascaras that I've tried do not do that. So I've tried um, the Gifted Mascara, the Amazonian Clay one and the Brown Tube. I don't know, it was okay. Um, Lights Camera Flashes, Lights Camera Splashes, Big Ego is what I use at the moment on my top lashes. I think. If you have a look in my makeup collection video, you would have seen that there. I go in a little bit more detail talking about it, but oh my gosh, that is makes my lashes the absolute longest and fullest that I've ever seen in my life. The brush is absolutely amazing. But yeah, if you want to know more about that mascara, I will link my makeup collection video below. So all vegan, all 100% vegan products that I use in my makeup kit, but also on my base daily as well. So another product I have here from Tarte. So this is their knockout treatment. So I actually got this as a gift of gratis from work. And I did not know what the F to think of it. So I first, first time I put it on my face, I was like, what in the world am I having an allergic reaction because this stuff freaking burns so you'll see here it has like a little hole in the cap so you just turn that upside down and you put a little bit like onto a cotton pad and you'll pop it on your face but this is not a toner so I was using it wrong when I first got it this is not a toner this is a treatment this is an exfoliating treatment so it is a 10% acid complex. So it has a mixture of different acids in here. You have, so there's salicylic acid and lactic acid. So I would say salicylic is more for your like oily acne prone skin. It's going to help oil control, help with blemishes and things as well. And lactic acid is more for like the texture and it's going to clean out the pores. So it's going to help get out those really stubborn, dark, grimy bits of dirt out of your blackheads and really clean your pores. And with this treatment, it's going to exfoliate the skin, balance the skin, and minimize your pores. So really shrink them down. So how I would use this, I would say maybe once or twice a week. And I have found I do it on when I have a day off the next day. So I do it only at nighttime. And when I have the day off the next day, I don't wear any makeup. So if you wash your face in the morning, you should be fine. But I don't wash my face in the morning. I wash it at the end of every night. So I found for some reason the next day when I don't wash my face, even if I just use a toner, because normally I do that, I'll just use a toner to remove the excess oil and really like balance my skin before I put any makeup, moisturizer, all that stuff on. But the skin has a bit of a sticky texture and my makeup doesn't want to stick to it. My foundation always ends up separating when I try to do that. So if anything, if you do want to use this the night before and wear makeup the next day, I would say wash your face before you put any makeup on. But when you're using this at night time, you don't need to use it with any other skincare products. So just put this, it's going to be most effective if you put it on straight away and the first time you ever use it because it is such a high concentrated complex of acids 
it is going to sting a little bit and tingle. So don't be like me. Don't freak out and be like, oh my god, your face is melting or burning off you having an allergic reaction. It is a bit of a fun product to get your friend, husband, <laughs> anyone to try and they're like, what the f***? <laughs> it's a bit uh, funny in that way. But the more times that you use this product, the more sort of balance that your skin is going to be. If you think of the pH level where from like 1 to 10, I think it's, what is it? Oh my gosh, I can never think of numbers when I'm put on the spot and I'm too lazy to check on my phone or whatever. But I think our skin is meant to be, I think it's like a 5.3 or like a 6 or something like that. Not higher, not lower. So this is going to help make our skin more acidic, less basic, more balanced. So the more times that you use this product, the less that it is going to feel the burn. The burn that you're feeling is because your skin is imbalanced and sort of um, reassessing and situating itself. Okay. But seriously, it's so amazing. In the morning after I use this product, I notice the blackheads on my nose. The black stuff in there has dissolved, so it's um, really smooth. It's amazing. I love it. Definitely works. If you're hesitant, you can always buy the mini size just to try it out as well. One more product while I'm on a tart kick. This is my third bottle of this stuff. Oh my god, it's so good. So this here is the Deep Sea Collagen Serum. So as you can see, the serum is at the top and then the oil sort of sinks to the bottom so what you want to do before you use this is shake it up and I'm telling you so normally I have oily skin and this does not feel oily on my skin so it actually absorbs straight away and I do three drops of it so like that and I rub it in more like patting and pressing to make sure it's absorbed and I do that all over the entire face because I'm more oily I only do this routine at nighttime so this comes from a 100% vegan collagen so if you are concerned about anti-aging and want to start using products that have collagen in there um, a lot of brands use collagen which come from animals or marine collagen and Marine collagen is, I guess, a bit unregulated. Back in the 90s, if you ever saw all of the like posters and things of save the seals or like don't club the seals, they literally take these big clubs with like nails in them. They beat to death these little little baby seals because when seals are small, their skin is the most elastic, so they have that most elasticity in their skin, so it's really like soft and smooth. Because when they grow up, that skin is gonna stretch as they become like a big mommy or daddy or just a big seal, you know? So, I found especially a lot of Asian cosmetic companies will use that, but I feel like it is pretty obsolete these days. I think, um, Marine collagen now refers more to like skills from fish I don't know. I just prefer to buy the But yeah, I really like this stuff. It smells um, quite like fresh. It doesn't really have, it's not scented. I just like the smell of skincare. I'm a dope. But um, yeah, it's really nice and like fresh like a really nice and fresh sort of scent. It's not too like overpowering, but what I love, it's actually one of the only oils that I found that I could use on my face. I do get breakouts quite a lot, but I found that this one, I don't know what it is. Like it says it's a mix of seven different essential oils, but it might even just be that it's stabilized within the collagen and the other particles of the serum I have no idea but all I know is that it works and it makes my skin feel really soft and smooth and it's so getting good anti-aging benefits as well recently I've started going to a lot of conventions whether it's comic conventions wrestling conventions even like 
even like music festivals and things like that. But at the moment, I have got this adorable lounge fly bum bag, or in America, we would call them a fanny pack, but in um, Europe and Australia, fanny is a word for something else, <laughs> not a butt. It's the, like a, a front butt. <laughs> Vagina. Vagine. The, the pus pus. If you picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> Seriously. So this is a faux leather material. All of Loungefly's products are vegan leather. And even when I'm doing clients for makeup, I literally just always have this like strapped around my waist. I'll have my phone in there if I need to check like reference pictures. Like sometimes they'll send me mood boards and things from Pinterest. And I like to just pull it out every so often and have a look just to make sure that the makeup on my client or model's face remains that constant sort of continuity as the pictures that I have saved on my phone. So I just like to check that sometimes. Also check the time, but I will show you my second uh, star of the show, which is helping me with that. So this is my baby G watch, <laughs> which I which I actually got for Christmas from my husband because he is the sweetest. But um, at work, I work in a really busy shopping mall. So I can't always run and check on the registers or computers what time it is and my coworkers will get really annoyed <laughs> if I'm like, hey girl, what time is it, you know? So this is what I wear. It's kind of like an off-white, almost like a baby pink sort of color, but it's very like subtle. Of course I wanted to show you upside down. But it literally took me about six months to figure out how to change the time. So Google that. I'm not going to be explaining that today. But I get lots of compliments on this watch. And one reason I love it, probably a bad example because it's filthy and I need to clean it. But because it's like a rubber material, the band is perfect to clean if you work in like a kitchen or if you're a makeup artist like me, I always get foundation swatches all the way like up and down my arms which is not fun <laughs> but yeah it's really easy to wipe off compared to like a metal watch which has those little like elastic and you would literally have to like individually clean every little glue groove of the watch oh my god ain't nobody got time for that especially not me but now I got the time I'm gonna know what time it is so yeah it's But yeah, next I want to tell you a little bit about my ISO habits. Um, <laughs> I changed into a pair of leggings today for you guys. So this is my most sort of, um, still got my fluffy socks on though. <laughs> but this is my, my most sort of uh, dressed that I get. Otherwise, I've been living in my pajamas. And ironically enough, just before because here in Melbourne we're still in stage four lockdown now, just before all of our shopping malls and stuff closed down due to COVID. Um, Peter Alexander, and I believe they, I'm not sure if they still are online or not, but they do have a online website if you want to check them out. But they were having a 30% off sale on all of their reduced, like old season sort of items so they were clearing out all the winter stuff I think making stock for like summer stuff to come in or whatever they're doing I don't know but I bought a ton of things so you'll see here let me take them off <laughs> so I've got a few different pairs of socks and two pairs of pajama bottoms so these ones I just took off my feet so sorry if they're a little bit dirty but I love this separate print so much oh my god and they've got like little you can see it says Peter Alexander across the bottom and it's like little rubber so it grips to the floor so you don't so it's that sort of like slip proof backing and all on the inside it's lined with this fleece and no it contains no sheep's wool or anything so 
It's 100% vegan acrylic fiber. I check all of the material because sometimes it's hard to find these knitted socks that haven't got wool in them. And another pair of socks I've got here. So these are cute little stripy booties. They've got little rubber soles on the bottom. And you kind of have like this knit, sort of knit sweater material. The little footy on the back is pink. And then they have like a little pink stripe at the top with little, little jingle, jingly balls on the outside. <laughs> and then this last pair I have, seriously so surprised that they're not wool. So these here are like this really pretty pastel, almost like marble, they're so nice. Really warm and cozy as well. And these are my fave pajama bottoms. Oh my gosh, let me show you. I got them big, okay? I sleep in them. And then at the bottom here, so you've got these little, they're gathered on the side. You can see the little elastic here. But they're like little like leg warmers built in. They're so comfy. And you can hike them all the way like up your leg so they turn into like capri pants. Or you can leave them like all the way down as well. And then check this outfit out. It is so cute. So these pajama pants here. You see the sleepy cats? They're so cute. These ones are more like skinny fit and they're tapered at the bottom you can see and then the matching top it says catnap oh my god so precious it's long sleeves but yeah I'm going to insert some um, outfit inspo of pajamas and I hope that you enjoy. watching today I hope that you enjoyed my not really haul but collection of faves sorry there were so many I might edit a few out if it gets a bit like hectic and if I still like them I'll show you next time <laughs> but yeah I think as well because I accumulated so many products that are new that I'm really loving at the moment and I've never done a favorites video before so this is my first time but yeah, let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. And if so, I can make them. Or if not, then I won't bother. <laughs> That's okay. But um, see you guys next time. Bye!